Hello and welcome back. This is Greg French. Uh, today we're going to be covering Chapter 5, Part 2 in our A-plus uh, computer repair series, uh, CPUs and chipsets. Uh, the Intel processors. Early model numbers were 8088, 8086, the 286, the 386, and the 486. It's interesting, uh, Intel, uh, and not Intel, but uh, IBM chose to use the 8088 as their first chip to introduce to the public. It was only an 8-bit processor, even though the 86 was available at the time. The 86 was a 16-bit processor, but shortly after IBM came out with a the computer, they did go ahead and come up with a new one, a new update, using the 8086. Uh, new 3-digit processor numbers, the Pentium series, the 500 to 800, the Celeron, and the 300 series, and the Pentium M processor, 700 series. Overview of the Pentium family of processors. Uh, two arithmetic logic units, ALUs, are used for multiprocessing. Uh, remember that was kind of the standard since 1993 to incorporate two ALUs. 64-bit uh, external path size and two 32-bit internal paths. Uh, eight types of Pentium processors, uh, example the Pentium 4, uh, Celeron, and Xeon are offshoots of the Pentium family. Uh, the Intel processors continued. The older uh, Pentiums no longer sold by Intel. The classic Pentium, the Pentium MMX, the Pentium Pro, the 2, and the 3. Uh, the 2 was uh, retired after the Celeron came out. The Celeron was actually a cheaper chip, but uh, the story again is the engineers did such a great job on the cache performance that it was able to surpass the performance of the Pentium 2. Uh, uses a 486 pin socket or a 775 LAN socket. Uh, uses level 2 cache uh, within the processor housing. So now they have both level 1 and level 2 that they're using. Pentium 4 runs it up to 3.8 gigahertz. Later versions uh, use the hyperthreading, that newer technology of hyperthreading. Uh, the Pentiums are sometimes sold boxed with the cooler assembly. A lot of times you just see the chip. Uh, right here, just sold by itself, but then also, a lot of times Intel will actually uh, put it in this larger box along with uh, their standard uh, heat sink and, and fan. It's nice to be able to buy those together, otherwise after you buy the chip you have to buy the, the heat sink separately. Uh, Intel processors continued some mo uh, mobile Pentium processors, the Pentium M, the mobile Pentium 4, and the Celeron, similar similar notebook type processors. Uh, the Xeon uh, processors use the hyperthreading technology and dual core processing uh, designed for servers and high-end workstations. Titaniums uh, utilize the EPIC which is a newer instruction set than the uh, CISC which was the complex. External data path is 128 bits. The L1 cache on the processor die, L2 and L3 are, are now on board. Uh, the Intel Itanium processors, uh, here you can see uh, we've got the Itanium 1 or Itanium and Itanium 2, uh, the different speeds of the two, type of cache. You can see that Intel is very, very stingy on the amount of cache. They have increased that considerably now. Uh, and the different bus speeds. This is fairly older technology. AMD processors manufactured by Advanced Micro Devices Incorporated, uh, geared to 64-bit desktop. Now, AMD was the, kind of the pioneer for the 64-bit and their mobile processors. They took away the performance of Intel there for quite a long time and started taking a lot of market share away from Intel. Older AMD processors use uh, uh, motherboards not compatible with Intel processors. Earlier processors used a 321 pin socket, so it was a non-standard socket. Current AMD processors uh, for desktops, the Athlon, the 64, dual core, Athlon 64 FX, very high performing processors. For servers, the uh, Athlon MP and the Opertron. For notebooks, they came up with a, a Tron, which was a new type of processor, uh, a little lower price, but uh, performing very well and the uh, Mobile Athlon 64. Uh, here's a chart uh, concerning the uh, AMD processors, the Athlon, Athlon Model 4. 
VIA uh, and Citrix processors uh, use same sockets as earlier Pentium processors. Uh, their target was the personal electronics and embedded devices. Three processors that they came up with, C3, C7 uh, for electronic devices, and the C7M designed for the ultra-small notebooks. Processor packages. The processor packages provides uh, for the processor housing and how it integrates into the motherboard. Flat and thin processor packages, they lay flat in a socket on the motherboard. Uh, connectors can be pins or LANs, which is the newer type. Uh, Intel examples, uh, the pin, uh, plastic pin grid array. AMD examples was the ceramic uh, pin grid array. The cartridge uh, processor packages can be installed on a slot or lay flat in a socket. Intel example was the uh, SECC, which was the single edge contact cartridge. Uh, stands in a slot one on the motherboard. Uh, here's the Intel Celeron processor is housed in a pin grid array type form factor, which has pins on the underside that insert into a socket, uh, socket 370. Here's another example of the, so uh, the, of the slot, Pentium 2 with a heat sink and a fan attached to it. It goes in the slot one on the motherboard. This was a big development, latest development at, the, at its time. They thought this was going to be the new way that they were going to uh, build processors and put them on the motherboard, but it only lasted about a year or two. And then they went back to the pin grid array. Processor sockets and slots used to connect the processor from the motherboard. Motherboard uh, type must match the processor package. Types of sockets. Sockets are built around pin grid array or the LAN grid array. Variations several examples. Types of slots, slot 1, slot A, slot 2. Newer processor packages uses the uh, sockets, not the slots. We've moved away from, again from the slots. Uh, uh, sockets uh, looks like slot, uh, slot 1 to the processor required in the socket. Uh, here's a little plastic cover used to uh, uh, cover your LAN grid arrays and you don't have a CPU installed. Uh, here we have the riser card on the motherboard. It can be used to install a Celeron processor in the motherboard with slot 1. In review, Intel processors. Uh, we've, re we've talked a lot about the Intel processors. They have taken away the market share back from AMD. We have a lot of uh, cache now on board the Intel processors, which really helped to improve the, the performance quite a bit. AMD processors, uh, it's very good. They're still around, uh, pushing Intel to make faster and faster chips. So we need that competition. The slot, the pin grid array, and the land grid array, land grid array, land grid array is now what is used. Uh, no longer pins, but it's actually pins that are kind of like on their side that lean against or, or uh, have kind of a spring tension that is used uh, against the sockets. Chipsets, very important. Chipsets are what really helps to uh, make sure we have a high performing computer. Uh, we need fast memory. We need a chipset that will support fast memory. We also have to have a fast uh, bus for our video card. The chipsets support that. Activities. Uh, I want you to research the PGA and the LGA and get ready for a discussion as to what's going on with those two technologies, uh, where we headed for the future, why one differs so much from the other. Uh, Lab 5.2, 5.3, the PGA and LGA, the types of uh, pins and lag grids for the CPUs. So I want you to go ahead and do those labs and then turn in the review questions at the end. Well, that's it uh, for this one. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Bye.